Now, the UK's engineering sector employs almost 6 million people, but it's facing a major skill shortage over the next few years. Steph is at Britain's biggest science and technology fair to find out how the industry is hoping to inspire the engineers of the future. If there's one woman who can do it, it's our Steph. <laughs> well, I'm certainly wearing the right top for it. Morning, Sam and Charlie. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm at the Big Bang Science Fair. It won't be long before this place is packed with around 20,000 young people who are coming to learn all about the different careers jobs you can have in science and engineering. Uh, and it's certainly uh, going to be busy here with lots of people coming in. But also, as part of this, they run a big competition. So lots of young people from around the country have been inventing things. And uh, one of the products you can see here we've got an action uh, this is Reese who's going to be showing off this product go on Reese give us a go show us how you do it so this is one of the many inventions this has been made uh, by some boys from a school in Thursk it's a, a boys school for boys who are on the autistic spectrum and we can talk to Cameron who can tell us a bit more about it so Cameron tell me what you've got here what does this do well basically it's a ride-on toy for the disabled and visually impaired and it has remote brakes and it has parking sensors from a car and also a rod for say if somebody's unsure and also it has a optional uh, well, uh, it has a light as well, just, yeah. that's just for fun though. Yeah, and how did you come up with this idea? Well, we thought because, like, so people, visually impaired people, don't get to uh, ride bikes like we do, so we thought we make it for them so they can have fun as well. Yeah, well, it looks brilliant, and we're going to be showing off a lot more of the experiments here. Thank you very much for that, Cameron, appreciate it. So more from me here a little bit later on. Steph, thank you. I think Steph wins the best transportation prize of the month. No, absolutely. Look forward to more of that a little later on. Good morning, Sal and Charlie. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm at the Big Bang Science Fair. So they're expecting something like 20,000 young people to be coming to visit this fair every day over the next couple of days. And it's all, as you say, about inspiring people into science and technology, engineering and mathematics, so all those different subjects which we need uh, skilled people in. And it's all about telling them the different jobs there are in the industry. And another big part of this is about the inventions that are here. So lots of young people from around the country have been competing with lots of different inventions and science project ideas. Let's go and meet some of them. Gia, I'm going to start with you first of all. So tell us what you've come up with. Well, I've designed an app that will help you with public transport and it has many features such as an alarm which would wake you up and alert you when it was your stop. Like if you wanted to listen to music or read a book, you wouldn't miss your stop at all. So basically, if you're on the train, like me, quite often, and you, you're sitting there and then all of a sudden you, you might nod off this will help you to make sure you don't miss your stop. Mm, definitely. And there's also a seating feature, you know, for those, those busy days when you don't know which carriage to get on. And there's some weather information, travel information, and it's general lost property and report. And the thing that's different about this app is that everything is in one place. You don't have to go to like different websites. Yeah. You don't have to email like 500 people just to find one lost umbrella. Everything is condensed and in one area. How did you come up with it? Well, I get the train every single day to school. I have to wake up at some disgusting hours. <laughs> and one day I saw this guy fall asleep and miss his stop. And I saw the horror in his face. And I was thinking it could happen to anyone. And like, public transport is such a good way to travel. And we just make, make people's experiences so much better. Yeah, love it. That is such a good idea. That is going to do well. Thank you, Gia. And Emma, tell us about yours. This looks really so interesting. I've designed a glove for deaf people, which uses motion sensors to detect sign language and then convert it to spoken speech. And then it's also got a microphone which picks up spoken Spoken language from a response and and notes it down on a screen on the inside wrist so the deaf person can read it. So so point that out to me on how that would work on so here. The sensors will be in the fingers and all across the hands and the palms and there'll be a screen on the inside wrist and this is all where all the sensors and will be converted into speech. And how did you come up with this? This is incredible. Well, I oh, read an article about how deaf people like struggle with like d communication and it might lead to depression and anxiety. And I thought it would be good for deaf people to become more independent in society. Yeah, and so you, you came up with this cracking idea. Well, good luck with that as Thank well. You. Thank you very much. And we're moving on to the next one. This is Louis with um, his teacher dressed as a beekeeper. Thanks, miss. You look great this morning. Louis, tell us what this is all about. Um, so um, I'm Louis. I'm from Pura Community High School in the North East. And my project um, is about repopulating bees in the North East. Because as we, people not many not many people know, but bees are extremely important to our economy. Without them, we would have crashed a long time ago. And 
since recent years a lot of them have been declining. So what, what does the project involve then? Um, so uh, we have four project aims. Those are to one, the first one is to build and design a safe habitat for the bees. Second one is to, to find out what's um, you know, in causing the decline in the bees. The third one is to raise awareness in the local community and the fourth one is to possibly mm. try and increase the and also, it means regularly putting your teacher in a bee outfit, which is always a laugh as well, isn't it? it is. <laughs> Thanks, Miss. Thank you very much, guys. Brilliant inventions. How good are they? And we've got loads more to show you throughout the morning. But let's have a chat with Paul, um, who's from Engineering UK, just about how, why this is so important. Morning to you, Paul. Morning. Great to see their inventions. What's this all about, this whole event, then? It gives young people the chance to bring their inventions and show them to other young people and take part in the competition. But actually we'll have about 70,000 people attending here, yeah. finding out about science and engineering. There will be lots of jobs in this area in the future, so this is about opportunity for those young people. And bringing alive the maths and the science they do in the classroom by meeting real people that use it every day. Yeah, and often the criticism is of uh, the engineering sector is it's got an image that people, it's quite outdated isn't it? So just tell us about all the different types of jobs out there, because they, they've quite a lot these days don't they? Well they do and we, we've got people here that are showing how you get clean water to sub-Saharan Africa if you want to have an impact on health that's a great way of doing it. The, the, the way in which um, biology and uh, engineering are coming together uh, for, for human health in the future and we've got things like the aeroplanes and the diggers and, mm. and the things that you might associate with engineering on a, on a large scale. So it's the things that will change the world and change our lives in the future that we all want to be part of and with digital and data underpinning so much of that as well. Well. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And yeah, we will be showing you more of those inventions. That's Reese there as well uh, from one of the schools, which has come up with this brilliant design. We'll tell you more about all of them a little bit later on. Show us your best moves, Reese. Can him go? <gasps> no, I think a screw's come off. Oh, no. <laughs> Steph, if there's anyone who you, can Reece, fix that, worry. it's you. Steph, go and fix it for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can sort that out. Here you go. There we go. <laughs> Quick running repair well, job. Sorted. It's like Formula One, isn't it? Thanks, Steph. We'll In see fact, you again. We're going to be talking about Formula One. The, those, all those, those youngsters there probably yes. end up working in Formula One, don't they? Because the engineering yes. skills. Yes. Um, yes, we've got uh, Christian Horner coming in a little later on from the Red Bull team. Yeah, and there's one more I want to show you before we go. Oh, and let's head over here because we were looking at this earlier, weren't we? Yeah. And uh, this is a device which is for, um, it's for young disabled people. So that is another invention we're going to be finding out more about a bit later on. But Owen, do you want to hand back to the studio for us? Brilliant. Thank you for joining us here. Back to you in the studio. Before we go, I think we should get a big goodbye from everyone, shouldn't we? How brilliant. And that's been part of this school report, WC School Report. So shall we have a big goodbye from everybody here? Thanks very much. Goodbye.